guidance by the center is provided in very limited numbers. We see that uh, out of 50,000 students, only 2% receive uh, counseling and training. 2% uh, is around 1,000 students out of the 50,000. It might look as a uh, large number, but uh, compared to the base, it's incremental. And uh, uh, the annual objectives of the center are, are much higher than that, so they are unable to meet their objectives. Uh, another finding shows how the number of internships to the number of students ratio, which is the internship should be the flagship product of centers. And we see how successful various universities are uh, in this field. We see that University of Pristina with only 0.12% has, has provided limited opportunities to the uh, student body in regards to internships and job opportunities, as they are in the university and as they graduate. That's around 60, 60, uh, 60 internships which they provide. Uh, it might be a little higher because they don't receive feedback from many of their opportunities. Uh, so it, it might be a little higher than 0 0.12, but it, it's again far, far lower than all the other universities. But then you see smaller universities, private ones, and especially those that have an internship system installed, like the AOK SCOP system, only the center itself provides 55% of the internships of AOK students. The rest, the 45%, it is a must for them to find their own way into uh, internship opportunities because it's a prerequisite for graduation. The same is for IBCM, International Business College in Trevisa. It also has a quite high number of students who are benefiting from a center, similar to Universal and AAB for a little bigger universities. That schools do not really do a lot of internships because more of their experience is acquired within the institution. They are professional schools, so I think that's the reason why the percentages go in, this, in these schools. Uh, uh, one of the indicators that shows us that career guidance in Kosovo isn't really being uh, uh, invested on by our institutions is the fact that the, the highest number of uh, staff for these centers is up to three. None of the universities has more than three students, who, uh, three staff members who work in the career guidance center. At the University of Pristina, for one of these staff members, out of the three that they have, uh, one serves to more than 16,000 students. Uh, we see huge numbers also for A and B universities, and for smaller universities, if I have only one staff member, it's much more efficient because there are only 300. And uh, there are international standards in regards to how many how many staff members serve to a certain amount of students. It's preferred to be from 100 to 300 for one staff member. So we're seeing that we're far from the standard here. And if we want, one of the prerequisites of the EU integration is also to apply the laws on higher education to conform them with the international standards. And that will be one of the issues that University of Pristina will face in the future. So better start to work on it from now. Uh, so these are some of the main findings that we can draw from this conclusion, from these graphs and from uh, my interviews. The main difference from, from, from the public center and the private centers is that uh, there is a different link to the base. Base meaning the administration and faculty of the university. Uh, we see that, uh, for example, in all uni private universities, in AUK and other universities, private ones, uh, these centers are located within the university, which is a physical link uh, by itself, and where they can organi organize and coordinate all of their activities. They are authorized and delegated uh, duties and responsibilities directly from the administration, which makes it a part of the entire system. You do not see this at the University of Pristina, which is uh, physically and uh, legislatively disattached from the entire university because they're located at the library and the universities at the philologic university uh, they, they have a lack of everyday communication uh, the university isn't really interested in having them supervised in a constant manner uh, one of the main issues by them is they think that uh, the university in the last few months and the last year has had major other issues which it had to deal with and they didn't have even any priority. This was not in one of their priorities. The co-op system, which is installed in some of our universities, it showed, even though there, we, we agree that there is a general lack of internships and job opportunities, not only for 
uh, students, but for the population as a whole, uh, they have been affected. And I think that uh, by having a uh, continuous contact and uh, trying to reach out to these companies is, is an action by itself, which the center doesn't do. And uh, I've asked them why do you not, why didn't you decide to uh, organize these leadership systems at least for various majors. And one of their issues was that if you do this, uh, many of the students, especially in the fields of economy, business management, finance, they would stuck within the system because it is difficult to accommodate 16,000, 32,000 students into internships. And each of them needs the, would need this to, as a prerequisite to, prerequisite to graduate, and which would create a clock within the system itself. Budget, the University of Pristina Center has a very limited budget. It's focused only on salaries and some limited activities that they design in the beginning of the year. So there is no space for creativity, for new ideas. And I think that, well, that's one of the major demotivating factors for the staff. They are not really expected to perform. And that's also why the staff doesn't feel like they need to increase the productivity or the quality of what they provide and the access to information. The University of Pristina uh, the center does not know a lot about its student body. It doesn't recognize what kind of majors the students are uh, pursuing, uh, what their statuses are, uh, their financial situation, and other information that all centers in the world do have. I think that this would be a problem also for the other centers because they also have limited data. They have their emails and basic information. But having that would mean that the the uh, center would create a feedback system and it, it would organize its opportunities and information in a much broader scale. Uh, I, together with my advisors, we thought of different ways of how to analyze and uh, solve this issue. One of the ways that is majorly used in developing countries is the making markets work for the, making markets work for the poor approach. What this approach basically does is it looks at ways how the system can be improved in a long-lasting long uh, systemic uh, process in which um, not the donor, the donor, if there is a donor that funds the change, uh, supervises all this process. It is the staff members of the center itself, in this case, who would be, be the ones managing all the processes that happen. So it focuses on the uh, basis of change that needs to be happened needs to happen and all the supporting services that would benefit from this change. And based on, based on, uh, if you look at the middle of this uh, donut, we, we see the major relationship between the center and the, and the students, the, the demands, the demand driving from the 50,000 students and the basic information. So it provides information from the email, 50,000 emails, its Facebook account, which is one of its main services. Uh, the individual and group counseling to more than 898 students, training to 1,000 students, and 30 companies to which they are focused. This is the base of the donut, which is considered to be the uh, aspects within the center which would need structural change and which, in which the center must focus on the upcoming three or four months its regulation and creating a legislative framework in which it can function. So. We see based on, based on the level of uh, importance that financial regulations, internal job organization, coordina coordination with stakeholders, in this case the university faculty and administration, access to university databases and perception as the fields in which the uh, center must try to design with the help of experts, the rules and regulations and create a memorandum of understanding with the university that they are willing to participate in. Once a proper legislative, a sound legislative framework is designed with the support of other factors, then we can look at the support services, the more visible stuff, like the uh, activities that it uses for fundraising, uh, training for staff capacity building, uh, PR and marketing campaigns, partnerships, networking, etc. These can then, each of them can be individually attacked tackled by the university itself. So these are again, not to go through them again, all the rules and regulations which would be needed to be defined in order to create this legislative framework and to create a mandate for the staff to be able to create meaningful change within the center. 
and uh, the supporting services which would be affected by this, uh, the financial instruments, the skills of the staff, the facility itself, and the quality of the uh, product in general. This is a, my, a map, a mind map of how it would look the process within one year of intervention. It starts from the memorandum of understanding, which needs, must be signed at the beginning to show that the university does agree in the changes that need to be done, and then drafting and approval of the CGC strategy. Drafting and approving a CGC strategic plan. So this is the part of the rules and regulations. Uh, uh, it's, uh, every, each of these rules and regulations needs a, sp a specific team of experts to design these uh, rules and regulations. Once they receive approval, uh, we go to the approval of regulations and then we can draft intervention strategies for each support service. And I've been presenting this uh, to many uh, organizations by now in the last few weeks and I've, sh I've received interest especially from international donors. One of the projects is enhancing youth employment. They are already working in the career guidance field and I've also designed this uh, this uh, budget, which uh, would present the maximum expenses that uh, the center must go through in order to uh, be able to have uh, these uh, structural systemic changes. It would be around 9,750 based on uh, Kosovo's trends in uh, expert costs and other uh, costs related to implementation. So the recommendation that I propose is to sign this memorandum of understanding and increase the relationship improve the relationship, the initial relationship between CDC and UP, draft and improve the strategic plan, create a sound legislative framework, the base of the university, and then look for the necessary financial capacities to reform the supporting services. Thank you very much. This is my thank you. Any questions, please? Question. Uh, this project has already uh, been delivered to the Enhancing Youth Employment uh, project in Kosovo. This is led by Helvetas, it's a Swiss international organization. Uh, we have presented it to the rectorate of the University of Pristina and they have shown interest in implementing it. It is much more detailed in my project, so if any one of you is interested to know more about this approach and can use it for their own structures because it's not limited to career guidance, then I'm happy to share it. How about this one? Oh, sorry. Okay. You mentioned that some people did not want to talk with you? Yes. Uh, one of the reasons was uh, because of the type, the nature of the questions that I designed. I first approached these center staff, the leaders of these centers, through email, asking them for a potential meeting and the type of questions that I would be asking and showing them the purpose of this project and uh, I, I didn't receive any response from the universities, university centers so I decided to visit them directly and ask my questions in ways not presented in my survey so I needed to observe and ask different members of the staff on how the, their performance, how they're doing. I was very, there was very limited information that I could gather in the course of finances and internal rules, which I would need in this case, but I think that that was enough in order to create a comparative analysis, as I did. What do you think the reason was that they were reluctant to share information? With? I think that the main reason was that because uh, it was, uh, uh, questions were focused on quality and performance and coming from another university they maybe felt that this is very internal information uh, yes. I have one question too then but with, um, when you were talking especially about the staff student ratio for the center you saw explainingly the AUK and also in the weeks um, they're really quite effective and so when you look at those numbers, are you recommending what sort of ratio it should be? So if I have one career advisor, how many students would you recommend when you see the enormous numbers of UP? Do you sense there's a, an optimal ratio? Uh, there is a range, an optimal range, which is from 150 to 300 students. Mm -hmm. 
for one when you get your staff member. Uh, in universities in the region, University of Tacoma, for example, Eastern uh, Europe, uh, Southeastern European University, they do have an entire facility only for career guidance. We have similar cases in Bulgaria. The American University of Bulgaria does have such a center where they have employed more than 15 students. It doesn't really need to be only paid staff. They can create a system of internships within the center itself and be cost effective. So I think that the optimal ratio is within that. Thank you very much. Thank you.